Well, welcome back. It is Chelsea who will be defending a one-goal advantage in the second half of this international friendly. Their second on Japanese shores against Barcelona in their first. And you can see wholesale changes made at the break, certainly from Barcelona's perspective. Frankie de Jong lining up. Palazzolania is in the team as well. It's Rafinha who gets us going. Antoine Griezmann will not be reappearing for the second half here for Barcelona. Just a reminder, first pre-season friendly of the campaign for the La Liga champions. So Ivan Rakitic is out there, Fina through the centre. Nelson Semedo getting on the ball early as well to affect things for Barcelona. First shot fired away. It's wide for Malcolm, a player who has been linked with a move away from the Blaugrana this summer. Yeah, it's absolutely no surprise, Ross, that they've made these whole sale changes, Barcelona. First pre-season friendly, as we know, almost inevitable that they'd be switching 11 for 11 at half-time. You can see the changes uh, implemented by Frank Lampard, Zuma and Alonso on for David Luiz and Emerson Palmieri. Switches around at the back. And then Chelsea just that little bit further along with pre-season. No surprise that a lot of these players will be seeing 60 to 90 minutes. Involved here. Clash of the 219s. Carlos Elena. Elena switching numbers this summer actually, allowing Frankie de Jong to take uh, his favourite 21 shirt he wore so that would lustrously at Ajax. That would have cost de Jong a little bit, that's for certain. There'd have been a nice Rolex watch delivered to uh, Elena's locker room, I'm sure. Change at the back for Chelsea involving Fakayo Tomori coming in for Christensen. So it's Zuma and Tomori, the central defensive partnership in the second half. With Alonso coming in at left back. To your point, Matty. Yes, uh, Chelsea making far fewer changes. Tammy Abraham still out there. Kovacic and uh, Jorginho still the fulcrum. Pulisic still out there as well, although he's on defensive duties at the moment. Rafinha. Here's De Jong. All the Barcelona fans, I'm sure, absolutely anxious to see how De Jong fits into the Barca system over the coming weeks. Just get the feeling that he'll fit in just fine. It will be a, a smooth, seamless transition for De Jong. I just think he's that guy, he's that character, he's that good a footballer. Just takes everything in his stride. The challenge being put in by Carlos Perez. Perez has uh, tasted success against Chelsea in the UEFA Youth League. They won the final in 2018 can see uh, an updated 11 for Barcelona, including uh, another signing who came in in January, Jean-Claire Todibo, playing alongside Clement Longley. Guillaume Jaime, another of the La Masia tribe, playing at right back wearing the number 28 shirt. Changes everywhere you look including debut for Neto, the man 
who has taken the position of uh, Jesper Sillison. A straight swap deal in goal between Barcelona and Valencia this summer. And so, former Juventus and Fiorentina goalkeeper. Speaking about how he's really relishing the chance to take this opportunity that he's worked so hard for, but that was very unexpected for him. After two years in Valencia's first team and returning them to the Champions League. Of course, glory, of course, at Barcelona's expense too, in Copa del Rey. I think Frankie de Jong's already had about 30 touches <laughs> completed successfully 20 out of 20 passes something like that just glides over the turf always demanding the football as well happy to take it in tight areas a little disappointed that we're not going to see uh, a bit more of Ricky Pooch, I want to get his name correct. We've uh, had a nice message on Twitter from Lefty Landers talking about uh, the young midfielder. If you're just joining us, you missed a lovely display from him in the first half, in the center of Barcelona's midfield. Yeah, I'd like to see Pooch linking up with De Jong as well, both young players. Pooch obviously 19, De Jong 22. forever will remember his name. I think it'll be one that we'll be seeing and hearing a lot more of this season for Barcelona. He played something like 150 La Liga minutes last season for Barcelona. I'm sure there'll be more of this. Pedro succeeded in keeping it in and then getting there just ahead of Carlos Perez. That's uh, Rakitic winning it back. De Jong again settling it down. He talked about being happy to play on the right side, the left side of midfield or in the middle. Not necessarily a, a replacement for Busquets perhaps. That guy's happy to play anywhere. He's happy to be out there on the field. He just wants to play football. He knows that the money, the glory, the silverware will come. He's certainly going to get a taste of all three of those here at Barcelona. Signing announced in the midst of the season. And he's still enjoying that wonderful run with Ajax to the semi finals. The Champions League, which shot away. Rafinha. It's a decent strike from Rafinha. Good soft hands from Kepa in goal for Chelsea. Take another look at it. Takes a little deflection on the way through. Kepa just happy to parry it down, gather at the second attempt. Abraham, the go at Longley, running out of track. <laughs> Popping up there at left back is Frankie Dion. Seems to be happy to play anywhere, as you say, Matty. Of course, it's very, very early in his Barcelona career, not quite nine minutes into it. But he seems comfortable in that Barcelona shirt. As you mentioned, Ross, the, the deal was done midway through last season, and it didn't seem to affect his style of play. It didn't affect anything about him in an Ajax shirt. Just went about his business diligently. It's Perez. He's been allowed to travel a long way, but he didn't come up with the finish that the run deserved, really. It's a glorious run. Straight through the heart of the Chelsea defence. Great feet, left foot onto the right foot. 
didn't seem to be comfortable taking the strike with the right foot. So had a little flick with the outside of his left. Here we see it at the death. Didn't get enough of it. Never really going to trouble Kepa. Actually got his first team debut in the last match of the league season. It was a La Liga debut, as it turned out also to be. 2-2 draw with Abar. He replaced Malcolm, who's out there with him tonight. Good record, the under-17s, now 21. Carlos Perez and the under-17 Spanish team that played the Euros a few years ago. Here is Malcolm. Sonido. Nice touch from Rafinha. It's deft as it was delightful. And Carlos Perez is the man at the end of the move again. Yeah, and that from Perez, it has to go across Kepa. There's no way he's going to beat him at that near post area. Has to be fizzed across Kepa's goal. Forced the goalkeeper into giving up a rebound. Not enough on that strike from Perez, but another good move from Barcelona. Yes, a brand new 11, but this second half is starting off very similar to the first half. Barcelona were very much in com command for the opening 20 minutes of the first half. The opening 11 minutes of this second half, they've been in commanding form as well. Perez did manage to notch nine goals in the third division in Spain this year, playing with Barca B. I'd love one against Premier League opponents tonight. Crowd very respectful in Saitama. Not your rowdy bunch. I was going to say, by respectful, do you mean quiet? <laughs> yes. Here's a turnover for Pedro. And something extra fierce to get the better of Neto there. Roberto Morara is Neto's real name. Couldn't have been more aptly named, could he, with the nickname? Absolutely perfect for him. Griezmann used to play in goal after training sessions. He put on gloves to defend against his teammates. I can imagine Griezmann flying around in the six-yard box, I must admit. Soccer action does not stop on ESPN. Continuing tonight with three International Champions Cup matches. First, Real Madrid against Arsenal, 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. And at 9 p.m., got Chivas facing Atletico Madrid also on ESPN. And over on ESPN Plus, Bayern Munich taking on AC Milan. Arsenal done well, busily winning that ball back. Alenia! Might fall for Rafinha, who's offside. It's a great first touch from Alenia. Gets the ball out of his feet with a second. Good strike across Kepa. I think Kepa will be too happy to offer up that rebound. Luckily for Kepa, Rafinha was just a, a foot or two offside. Oh, they've got to be careful at the back there. Helped out by the linesman, but Pulisic was very close to getting in behind Tadebo. And Chelsea having made a few switches at the back are now going to make some changes elsewhere and it's Pulisic's number that's being held up to be replaced by the England man Ross Barkley Tammy Abraham also coming out of the lineup. Kennedy's going to have another go here as well another player that Lampard's keen to make a decision on in regards to his future and Olivier Giroud coming in Mountains making way. So 
So Abraham's night is done, along with his uh, fellow academy graduate Mount. The big acquisition, Christian Pulisic, fresh from his first start, another hour under his belt. So coupled with the 25 minutes he got against Kawasaki, should be uh, working his way towards fitness. He got about 10 days off following the final of the Gold Cup, indeed, Pulisic. But he's still very fit. <laughs> it's Perez. All first-time effort from the arriving Rafinha. Gathered in again comfortably by Kepa. A great hand from Kepa. Perez down this left-hand side has been very impressive. It's a good pull back into the path of Rafinha. Rafinha met it very well. A good save, diving down to his left-hand side. Kepa's shown how alert he is in this second half. Didn't have a great deal to do in that first half. Made two or three good saves already. Not great saves, but good saves. Saves that need to be made. Obviously mentally focused and stayed in this game, Kepa. Here's Barkley. Certainly enjoyed his first full season under Sari, much more than he did his uh, first half season under Conte. Regularly used last year by the Italian tactician. It's interesting to see as well that Kennedy, number 16, who was just in our shot, playing on the right hand side when he was at Newcastle. We used to see him on the left hand side, on loan obviously at Newcastle. Now he's come to play on the right-hand side. Pedro's moved over to play on the left-hand side. And Ross Barkley just playing off Olivier Giroud. a large number of players as Lampard in these uh, first few friendlies as they now work towards the uh, last remaining three do you think we'll see some movement of players out of the club from the group that have been involved we'll let you answer that in just a few moments here's Alonso there's Kennedy one of those under questioning taking aim and an inflection almost Leads to Chelsea's second. Good reaction from Neto. Fadibo with a thumbs up for his goalkeeper too. That really is very good reaction save. Tadibo. no more than eight yards out from goal. It's a good strike from Kennedy. Just hits the inside of that right leg. Neto reacts very well, very quickly. Spalling down to his left-hand side. Just to jump off the back of those remarks, Ross, I, I think so. I think you'll see certainly some of the players who've been used in the, certainly in the Irish friendlies that uh, Chelsea had. I think some of those guys, the younger players, will be moved out on loan. Obviously, drew 1-1 with Bohemians. Beat St. Pat's 4-0. Three or four, at least three or four of those players will go out on loan. Ampadu obviously has already gone on out on loan just recently. A couple, just a couple of days ago, signed a season-long loan with RB Leipzig. Yeah, the uh, Welsh centre-back has had a sprinkling of uh, experience in the first team now with Chelsea. Going uh, to get a full season with the Bundesliga and the Champions League under his belt. Other players you look like, so Billy Gilmore, Chalabar, Lucas Piazon, Lewis Baker as well. You figure a good three or four, if not all of those guys will go out on loan. We know that Lampard and, and Jody Morris will know the younger players very well. Here, 
He'll have a, a good idea of who he wants to see out on loan and who he wants to keep in his 25-man squad. Yes, the um, first-team squad is well established. Maybe you can't bring in the reinforcements. You don't want to get too excited with the youth either. It's uh, that balance which I'm sure Lampard is aware of and his uh, coaching staff. Very much so, certainly with the expectations on any Chelsea side as well. You're going to want to sprinkle the squad with youth, but you certainly not want to won't want to liberally apply too much youth. It's a latest shot fighting by Ivan Rakitic. Nothing so far extending Kepa beyond his comfort zone. Kovacic, Kennedy. Alonso. Pedro's ball, which was ready for the uh, hit by Kennedy on his left foot, and then took a swing with his right, neither very successfully. Barcelona will be looking for the quick start when they get underway against Athletic Bilbao. I mentioned that they drew nil-nil with them at San Mames last year. Not the easiest place to go, as is Old Trafford for a league opening game. Barca's first home game will played the following weekend against Real Betis. Actually, that was the only fixture last year that they lost at home. Quite extraordinary 4-3 scoreline. P.K. Setien's team. Yeah, I think they'll make sure that doesn't happen again this year. It's not often that Messi scores twice in a game and loses. Did so on that occasion. So uh, starting off with two games in which they didn't pick up wins in the corresponding fixtures last year. Counts for nothing, I suppose. And they will certainly feel on the up with the uh, key signings they've made. Still maybe time for further acquisitions. And squad thinning. Barkley. Kennedy. Just looking for Giroud, but uh, the pass isn't going to find him. Yeah, I like the idea of, of Giroud pulling off at the back post and Kennedy just clipping the ball into him, but uh, the pass, the cross was all wrong, well over hit. Tamori. Actually, Calgary born was Tamori. Uh, switching his allegiances internationally. Won the World Cup with England under 20s a couple of years ago. There he is, rising to head clear. Another centre back option for Frank Lampard and a player he knows very well indeed from last year, like Mason Mount, was on loan at Derby. And in fact, picked up the Player of the Season award. He played pretty much every game, didn't he, for Derby last season. 47 games in both league and playoffs. Pretty impressive. Only one goal to his name. But a, a good defender nonetheless. And another of those players that Lampard must have formulated his ideas, his opinions of Tamori and whether he has the ability to play in the Premier League. It's lovely switching of play from Chelsea this time to find Alonso. Delivered the ball he could. Turned away by Longley. It's back with Barkley though. Dealt with by Longley again. Lenya coming back. Sean Claire to Debo. Looking for an outlet. Aiming at Rafinha. Another wave of Chelsea White coming into the game. Out comes Kovacic. Back 
Yoko standing by. It's one of those players to be introduced. Wearing the number 14 shirt. Another looking for a fresh start and a new management. Davide Zapacosta coming in. As Pelaqueta then moving out at right back. Kovacic being withdrawn as well. Drink water looking to come in. Fourth official being very polite about timing the calling off of these players. <laughs> Quite a drawn out process. So Batchway and drink water in for Pedro and Jorginho. Pedro's reunion with Barcelona ends. Chelsea player this summer. Yeah, they certainly are. New manager, new manager with new opinions. Everybody has that clean slate. Lampard will have his ideas, but he'll have gone in there unbiased. I'm willing to see what every member of the squad has to offer. This is their fourth friendly, three more to come before that titanic clash away at Manchester United. Oh, and a chance there for Kennedy. He just can't get it right this half. That's a glorious ball into Kennedy. Times to run perfectly. So well picked out by Ross Barkley. Kennedy gets it all wrong, though. Has to hit the target from there. We mentioned Ross Barkley, what a great ball that was into Kennedy's another player who needs more minutes. Flattered to, to deceive for large swathes of his career. And he made 13 starts for Chelsea last season, three goals, 27 appearances overall. It's Chelsea driving forwards now. Those changes have uh, served to disrupt Barcelona and breathe some uh, fresh energy into Chelsea's performance. Barkley's been impressive already. And, uh, so too Alonso, who tried to reach it, appealing for the corner. And Barkley will have another go at this. Great one, having built him up. Yeah, as a centre half, you never like that. You've trotted 80 yards upfield, and uh, the corner taker in this instance, Ross Barkley, can't beat the first man, and you merrily or not so merrily trot 80 yards back again. Game has lacked a little cohesion in the last 10 or 15 minutes. So many switches in personnel for Chelsea. A little easier for Barcelona to get to grips with all those changes. They made all 11 at half time. Chelsea's have come in dribs and drabs. Interesting that Ross Barkley was pointing to the extra miles that they've been putting in in training under Lampard. <laughs> I think he meant it positively. In fact, he's been speaking very positively as uh, Ross Barkley, talking about how it's great to have this legend of the club, new playing style. Looking forward to what's going to be a very exciting season for Chelsea. Yeah, I don't think you can fail to feed off Frank Lampard. Very positive character. 
wants to play the game in the right way wants his team to get the ball down on the on the floor play the ball out the back wants his goalkeepers to be comfortable with the ball at their feet as well which we know Kepa certainly is it's just whether they've quite got that strength in depth in the squad to to really trouble those Champions League places I think it's going to be a tough ask for Lampard and this Chelsea squad to get into the top four about this situation involving Hazard being at the fulcrum of absolutely everything last year because we know that he led the way in goals and assists as well but it was chances that he created a dribbler who who put teams under pressure constantly he was an outlet for, for Chelsea many times when they were having to sit away from home he's, he got the most shots away he's, he's just he, he dominated everything that they did in an attacking sense is it going to be easy to wipe that away and basically have a new team ethos where he doesn't rely on one player to do that well you have to have that new team ethos because there isn't the player of the quality of Hazard how easy it is to, to not be so reliant on Eden Hazard only time will tell I think it will be difficult I think Hazard the player that he was the player that he is and certainly the player he was last season for Chelsea it made it easy at times just for players to give Hazard the ball to feed in the ball and he would take the pressure off he would beat two or three men. He would keep the ball for, you know, seconds at a time. I don't think that Chelsea now have that man. Of course, it makes it difficult. You take Eden Hazard out of any side, I think that the game becomes more difficult. Pulisic isn't exactly the same player as Eden Hazard, and it would take him a little while to transition from the Bundesliga into the EPL as well. Barkley turning around the corner. Flicked on by Drinkwater. Now for Zappa Costa. Left uh, Barkley adjusting but not being able to reach it. Alonso's done well to win it back and feed it through. Batshuayi's there. Neto again. A very useful barrier for Barcelona. Yeah, he stood up big and tall. He didn't commit himself, Neto. It's a poor strike from Batshuayi in the end, but again, the marauding Alonso down this left-hand side from Chelsea's point of view. He's a quality defender and probably almost better in the attacking third. He has great delivery, can pick a pass, as we saw there. Absolutely carved open the Barcelona back line. Batshuayi, though, he has to do better. We've had uh, 21 changes out of the 22 players. Kepa's our sole survivor so far. And so far, he's keeping a clean sheet for this Chelsea team. Yeah, he's made two or three saves in the second half, Ross, but uh, only saves that he'd expect to make. He's obviously struggled with this stomach bug, hasn't he, while he's been out here in the... Uh, in Japan, so I, I think Lampard wants to see him get the full 90 minutes under his belt if possible. It's Bakayoko, a player who has certainly got a lot to play for. He can come back from AC Milan. Nicely done by Giroud. Kennedy finding Barkley, finding Batshuayi. Alonso picks it up. I think sometimes when the ball goes into Batshuayi, he just slows the game down too much. Zappa Costa. Another player looking for a home, isn't he, Batshuayi? He's actually been out on loan at Valencia, out on loan at Palace, out on loan at Dortmund. Did very well, actually, at Borussia Dortmund. So knows Christian Pulisic very well. I just don't think he always has that picture in, the he in his head when the ball comes to him. I think it's almost take the touch, then look up, see what he wants to do. Because as, as a centre forward, as a forward player, you can't do that. You have to know exactly where you want the ball to go as it's rolling into you. 
Rafinha trying to get that back to Rakitic, who pinched it off Marcus Alonso, who apologises to his teammates. Now the danger is averted. Kiyoko this time finding Alonso coming forward. Barkley. Oh, it's brilliantly taken. Ross Barkley. Neto wasn't expecting it. And Barkley adds Chelsea second. A bit of improvisation with his left foot. Turning into a very good night's work for Frank Lampard and his new Chelsea team. A lovely little flick round the corner initially from Barkley. The ball back into him from Alonso. Gets the ball out of his feet. Just curls it into that corner of Neto's goal. Curls it around Semedo. Neto a little unsighted. But that's the quality Barkley has. Nobody ever doubts the quality of Ross Barkley. He's had it since he was 17, 18 years of age. It's just all about Barkley finding the consistency and the ability to be in the starting lineup for 30, 35 games in a season and scoring 5, 10, 15 goals as well. We know he has the ability, whether we can transfer it to the pitch Saturday to Saturday, Tuesday to Tuesday. Hasn't always managed it, certainly didn't last season for Chelsea. But a glorious finish nonetheless on this occasion from Barkley. It really was very clever. And it's making the right decisions, which has been plaguing Barkley throughout his young, fledgling career. Taking a few too many touches on the ball at times, not making decisions quick enough, sometimes picking the wrong decisions. You'd have to say that playing under Sari has helped him in that respect, using the ball more efficiently. Certainly his England performances last season were joyful to watch at times. I remember the game in Seville where he ran the show against the Spanish. He can't rely on being a teenager or in his early 20s anymore. He's mid-20s now. He needs to find that consistency. I'm with you that under Sarri, he, he flourished at times. And certainly for England, he's put in some good performances as of late. But there, as you say, he's picking the right choices. And that really was the way he used Semedo to, to just block the sight of Neto. Curled it round him with his left foot. There's Rafinha. Barcelona love to get one tonight and a chance for Perez to do that wasn't able to take it first time wanted to cushion it the ball got away from him Chelsea drawn in like moths to the flame but Perez has won it back off Kennedy it's a cheap giveaway Rakitic Alasalenia Again, Guillem. Nice flick on from Semedo. Malcolm out there. Tamori, I think, got a flick on that. In fact, just the goal kick. Rafinha, who seems to now be the chief instigator for this Barcelona team that's out there. Now Perez. Setting off again, but he's not having the best of nights. Time to tell you about uh, Major League Soccer continuing on Friday with a clash of the league's best goal scorers. Joseph Martinez and Atlanta United heading west to take league, leading Carlos Vela and LAFC to task. That game is at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific on ESPN. ESPN Deportes and streaming live on the ESPN app too.
looks as if Chelsea are heading for another morale boosting victory to come and uh, take away some of the uh, I don't want to say doom and gloom because it was a very late goal which beat them against the uh, Japanese side but they are certainly going to be leaving Japan in a very good mood seeing off the defending champions of La Liga albeit in their very first game of pre-season yeah that's the thing it does make a big difference where you are in terms of pre-season the fact that this is Chelsea's fourth game certainly helps an awful lot and that's good for Kennedy and what can he do to use the ball Barkley into the path of Kennedy Just to put a shift in to reach it and he's done that Liam was just shrugged aside couldn't pick out Giroud though to be in some discomfort as Kennedy Bakayoko continues yeah, the assumption has to be that Kennedy's picked up a little bit of a knock there you would assume maybe a, a muscle injury as well it didn't seem to be a great deal of contact with Guillaume it's not fatigue <laughs> I, was I was just about to say I'm hoping it isn't the 60 yards sort of semi sprint semi jog down that sideline that's left him pretty much with his with his hands on his knees hasn't been that tough for pre-season only been on the pitch 26 minutes as well having said that I'd be spent after 90 seconds <laughs> one of those runs would be enough to put me out of action certainly in this heat and this humidity <laughs> as well certainly taking its toll on the players Going back to Chelsea, though, they'll be happy if they can keep a clean sheet here. They'll win the game, yes, but they'll be desperate to keep a clean sheet as well. Conceded a goal against Bohemians, conceded a late goal against Kawasaki as well. This is that Kennedy injury. Maybe there is a little more contact than I thought, just a little kick in the back of that left leg, the calf muscle suffering a little bit. It's the young fullback Guillaume Jaime. Frank Lampard looking pretty happy, pretty content with himself and his Chelsea performance. Jody Morris just there in the background as well. So a little social media post yesterday on uh, Chelsea's Twitter account that. Uh, the coaching staff ran nine kilometers back from uh, training to the hotel yesterday. Frank Lampard very much leading the field. <laughs> Jody Morris not with quite such a big stride pattern with those legs of his. Just languishing at the back. Is that one of the prerequisites that you keep your job on the coaching staff? Follow me back to the hotel, lads. If you don't, watch out. Certainly seems they look in pretty good shape, though, to me. Lampard and Jody Morris, I'm sure, could both play out there. The one thing that Frank Lampard has asked for from his players this year simply is buy into what I want to do, the way I want to do it. If you do that, you know, he's basically putting the question to his players to have faith in him. And uh, if he gets that buy-in from the beginning and they, uh, and they see it as sincere, then he could get a very positive response from the whole squad. I think so. Everything I've heard so far is good chance of Barcelona to at least notch tonight I think their way into the penalty area again that foul is on the edge of it from Drinkwater on Malcolm not been that type of game of course no it really hasn't that's a sore one though from Drinkwater just on the top of the left foot of Malcolm Just stamps down on Malcolm. Not a great deal of malice in that, a great deal of intent, but it certainly hurts. Okay, 
Well, they've worked hard defensively, Chelsea. They'd love to keep this clean sheet intact as we hit 90 minutes. And we're not going to have a work. I didn't see a great deal of belief in Rakitic's body language there that he was going to hit the target. Barcelona, of course, will be welcoming back their South American contingent, which numbers a great many players involved in the Copa America this summer down in Brazil, including two winners, Nartur and Coutinho. Luis Suarez, Arturo Vidal, and the lad who plays for Argentina. They'll be relishing a few extra days' rest. There's Rakitic. Oh, there's no clean sheet for Chelsea and Kepa. As Rakitic's quality shines through in injury time for the Barcelona fans in Japan. That's what they've been waiting to see. Rakitic doesn't disappoint. Fine strike. Yeah, there may not have been a great deal of confidence in his free kick just moments ago, but this looks absolutely effortless. Good first touch from Rakitic into his path. And absolutely smashes this home with the laces of that right foot. Nothing Kepa can do about this one. Kepa's made two or three good saves. Just left, absolutely grasping at thin air here. Nigh on top corner from Rakitic, couldn't have placed it much better. Well, the silky midfielder. It's been rumoured to perhaps be on the out at Barcelona. There's the captain's armband on him, though. And plenty of quality to suggest that this season is going to be yet another one of uh, productivity for the Croatian. Yeah, strikes don't come much cleaner than that from Rakitic. Really true strike with the laces of that right boot. the thing isn't it Barcelona it's not wholesale changes that are required it's a sprinkling of difference makers to revitalize the uh, the model well, certainly the nucleus is there Ross isn't it as you say just a, a sprinkling of a bit more talent De Jong's obviously come in Neto in goal well it ends with three goals on the score sheet, the last being the best, but it's merely a consolation for Valverde's team, who shakes hands with Frank Lampard, who delivers a Chelsea victory over his old foes, Barcelona. Goals from Abraham in the first half and Barkley in the second. 60 minutes for Pulisic as well. We'll be back after this to wrap it up.